Welcome to the Air Gun Show. This week we've got a fast fire fun gun on test, the Umarex Beretta CX4 Storm XT kit. But before that, I make targeting rabbits with the ATNX sight. I'm out rabbiting on some pony paddocks this evening. Now the rabbits are causing problems here by burrowing around the field margins. And those burrows pose a danger to horses and to their riders if a foot finds its way in there. Now I hit the rabbits here pretty hard through the winter months, but they seem to have bred well through the spring and there's been a bit of a comeback. So I'm back here to have another go at them. We had a drop of rain this morning, but it's turned out to be quite a fine evening. So I'm hopeful that the rabbits will venture out in this fine weather to feed on the grass that's been softened by that rain. Now the position that I've chosen, apart from enabling me to cover the areas where I expect one or two rabbits to emerge, also puts me within range of some farm buildings that have been attracting feral pigeons, collared doves, and even the odd magpie and wood pigeon. So there is the chance of making a mixed bag this evening. I'm trying something a bit different this evening. I'm using the ATNX site instead of my conventional scope now obviously it's known for being a digital night vision unit and over the months that I've had it on test I've used it for shooting rats and rabbits after dark and it's fared very well. And I just thought I'd give it a whirl this evening to see how it does in daylight conditions. Now one thing, it is quite a heavy setup, even on the Brocock Bantam which is a pretty light air gun. But fortunately I'm ambushing the rabbits this evening from a static position and that means that I can use the tri trigger stick to take the weight of the gun, so it's really not a problem. Uh, a bit more about the X-Site. Now I've mentioned in the past that it is absolutely packed with features, and I'll be the first to admit that they aren't all entirely essential, and I know I could certainly live without things like the compass and probably the Wi-Fi. But that said, some of them are very, very handy. The obvious one being the night vision potential, um, which I've used a lot already, and the fact that you can record through it, which all being well, will put to use this evening. Now, it's also very, very easy and quick to zero, and the fact that the display shows how much you're rolling the gun, I find incredibly useful to make sure that I'm not canting when I take shots. Um, one downside is that all of those features do make it very power hungry, and it does really sap through battery. So this evening I've kitted it up with an external power pack, which means I can just leave it running and not worry about having to conserve power. I've chosen the Brocock Bantam for several reasons. Now, first and foremost, it's very accurate, and the 10-shot magazine means I've got that reassurance of fast follow-up shots should I need them. Now, it's a legal limit sub-12 foot-pound air gun, 177 calibre, which keeps it nice and flat shooting, and also, very importantly here, it's nice and quiet, so we don't risk spooking those horses when I take shots. The spot I've chosen puts me about 25 metres from where I expect the rabbits to emerge from the undergrowth. Now that's fairly close, but there's a bit of a breeze pushing across the fields this evening and I don't see any point in making life harder than it needs to be. Now I've not bothered building a hide, and to be honest, it's not usually necessary for rabbit shooting. But what I have done is tucked myself right in close to this hedge. I'm on the shady side of it, so that just casts me into some shade. It just helps to keep me concealed. Um, what I will also do, because there is that chance of maybe getting a bonus pigeon, dove, maybe even a corvid, I'm going to pop on my head net just to keep my skin covered up. Thank <laughs> you. 
was a fantastic start. Managed to take the first one with a good clean kill. Second one made the mistake of lingering and I managed to bag that one too before it bolted. So that's got us off the mark and up to two very quickly. Well, that was one of those bonus birds I was hoping for. Collared dove swooped in straight onto the barn roof and it was absolutely oblivious to us. I managed to pick it off with a headshot. Now it's worth pointing out that I know I've got a safe ball out zone behind these buildings. And that's something you do need to check when you're taking elevated shots like that. Well, that one flipped about a little bit initially. I think I may have caught it in the neck, but it was hit nice and solidly. It has expired, so I don't need to break cover and finish it off. We can sit tight and hopefully one or two more will come out before it gets dark. There were two out again that time. I thought I may have had a chance to make another double. I got the first one with a good clean headshot, but the other one scarpered very quickly. Hopefully it'll be back out again soon. Well, that was another one from by that fence post. And it was another fairly small one, but I don't discriminate on size on pest control jobs like this. They're all causing the same problem and they all need to go. On top of that, the small ones tend to be particularly tender, so they're gonna be really good eating. Well, there's another one. The light's just starting to go now, so I'm gonna draw this session to a close 
and pick up what I've had. So I've got to say the Brocock Excite combo has done very well. We've accounted for rabbits and that collared dove and none of it's going to go to waste. It's all destined for the table so as well as controlling pests I've also managed to harvest some really good wild meat. Now one thing I am going to do once we've picked up is put the illuminator onto the Excite so we can carry on into darkness and if that goes well you may well see it on a future episode. And I think that session just about proves that the ATN Excite can cut it in daylight. And now it's the Airgun Show News. This is the Airgun Show News, reporting on location from the Northern Shooting Show. Taking place for the second time, this show has established itself as a major event on the airgunning calendar. The airgun industry was in force both in the halls and on the ranges. This impressive two-story range from BSA was a real eye-catcher. Inside, Air Arms Claire West told us about how their Air Arms experience had been received. We're extremely pleased with the experience, yeah. It's, the wind was getting up a bit yesterday, so we were a bit worried about whether or not it was going to go ahead. But we got the roofs on and the tables out, and uh, all the team are up there, and uh, yeah, they're having a really busy day. I think yeah, people are really beginning to understand what the experience is all about, and that's about trying out the different target shooting disciplines. The teams up there are so great, they're supportive, and they're really encouraging to our youngsters to get them to have a go at, at everything that's available. So yeah, we're really pleased. We partnered British Shooting in trying to get this event out and about in the UK this year. We know for sure that this discipline has been championed in the likes of Germany for a number of years now. The shooting is the focal point of the action. So the viewer or the spectator can really get involved. And it's great because, the, because you don't know who's gonna, you may see who comes into the shooting lanes first, but they might not be the first to leave, so it really gets the adrenaline going and, and the excitement of it. It's, just, it's amazing, it's, it's really engaging and really good to watch. The redesigned Nagan Shooter magazine was attracting interest in Hall 2, with punters keen to meet the editor and check out this game-changing magazine. The second new look issue is out now, featuring a full test of the BSA Ultra JSR, squirrel control with none other than Matt Manning, and the chance to win a pair of ATN digital binoculars. Head to your local newsagent and pick up a copy of issue 96. And there was just time to check out some of the new kit on show. Probably the biggest new egg on launch was the limited edition Brocock Compato Deluxe. It's got a new bipod system, soft touch stock, sling swivels and integral moderator. All this is available for a short period for just £100 extra on the price of a standard Compato. Elsewhere, the NV gurus at Nightside revealed not just a new product but a whole new brand. Meet the Nocturna handheld night vision unit. The, the initial idea around it was we have a kind of scope mounted hunting device that's out there. We kind of want to branch out into a more security based product um, and it's also got uses in the hunting market as well. So it's just a 100 meter, either a 50 meter or a 100 meter handheld version. So a bit like our Spotter Extreme, um, just more lightweight compact um, with a few little adjustment buttons just for scanning around that kind of thing, security guards. So kind of scanning around if you've say shot a fox, you wanted to go around looking for it, um, easily retrieve the fox, that kind of thing, or scan around uh, a smaller permission for a, a rabbit or possibly even a fox um, at a closer range. So the amount of sort of feedback we've got from peak hunters here has been really, really positive. So I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, to pushing it further. Thermal imaging has long been thought of as the costly preserve of full bore shooters, but not so any longer. Leopold's latest comes in under a grand. This is Leopold's first venture into thermal optics. It's the LTO, it's the uh, uh, Leopold Thermal Optic. Uh, it's a tracking device, it's, the, uh, it's uh, uh, a very small, very compact thermal device. It's got six settings, it's got six magnifications, 
Uh, it's got a range of just over about 100 meters for detection. Uh, it's very sensitive, it can uh, track a blood trail and the refresh time is 30 hertz so it's very quick. On a 30 mil tube it's lightweight, works from between minus 5 and uh, plus 40 degrees. Uh, so yeah, it's a very very handy compact thermal. £995 is the recommended retail price. And that's the whole point about the about uh, Leopold and their rebranding of the image. Uh, there's, a, there's a strong rebrand coming out of Leopold. Uh, they've got loads of new products coming out and I think they're really trying to make up uh, the, maybe some of the market loss that they've had in the past couple of years. And finally, punters dreaming of that big buy could make the dream a reality, thanks to Omni Capital which was offering personal loans as a show with instant approval and funds available in less than two hours. I'm Emily from Omni Capital Retail Finance and we're at the Northern Shooting Show. Uh, we are here following a successful attendance at the Great British Shooting Show this year uh, and we'll also be at the Game Fair later this year. We've met lots of existing customers as well as uh, quite a few new customers uh, wanting to apply for a personal loan or a retail finance loan through our retailers. So yeah, it's been a good show for us. Visit our website which is www.ocrf.co.uk or they can give us a phone call in the office. That's it from the Northern Shooting Show. And that's it from me. I'm retiring from newscasting as my vocal cords just can't take it anymore. That was the Egan Show News. Hopkins out. <laughs>this week's test gun is something rather different from the usual. It's the Umarex Beretta CX4 Storm XT kit, distributed in the UK by John Rothery. This CO2 powered air gun is semi-automatic, which should make for some great fast fire action. The CX4 styling is best described as tactical, and its synthetic stock is surprisingly functional. The drop-down pistol grip and long forend make for a comfortable hold and the cheek support is high enough whether using open sights or the supplied telescopic sight. One obvious feature of this gun stock is its numerous accessory rails. There's one on the top, one on each side and one underneath. And I can see a lot of shooters wanting to fit a laser sight to one of them to take full advantage of this Beretta's fast fire plinking potential. At 78 centimetres long and weighing around 2.5 kilos unscoped, this is a very manageable air gun, which is good news because you're going to want to shoot it freehand. It's fairly well balanced and its proportions mean it's not going to be too much of a handful for junior shooters. The XT kit is absolutely rammed with extras and includes a silencer that fits to the barrel by means of two grub screws. The muzzle report still makes quite a pop with it fitted but it does provide some sound suppression and I reckon it certainly improves the gun's looks. You also get a neat vertical forend grip that fastens to the lower accessory rail. It makes for a really good hold when shooting freehand and also features a very clever pop-out bipod. Simply press the button at the rear of the grip and two legs spring out to provide added support. If that's not enough, the kit also includes a Beretta branded 4x32 scope with an integral one piece mount which features yet more accessory rails. It's a very compact, fairly bright mill dot scope with finger adjustable turrets. The package comes in a very tough lined plastic hard case. It's a great way to keep the kit safe and organised, but there is one snag. You need to remove the silencer and shift the scope into a position that really is too far forwards for shooting to fit it in there. Although it's supplied with a telescopic sight, the CX4 Storm does come with open sights fitted. The rear element is adjustable for windage by Allen key and the front element is adjustable for elevation by screw and tools come supplied. The opens lend themselves brilliantly to fast fire plinking and the peep through one piece mount means you can still use them with the telescopic sight fitted. For all its extras, this airgun's standout feature has to be its semi-automatic firing cycle. 
It's fed by a 30 shot belt magazine which works brilliantly as long as you remember to use the supplied probe to ensure that pellets are properly seated before clipping it into the pistol grip. When the mag runs empty, simply press the button on the left of the pistol grip to release its retainer and pull it out for reloading. Reloading those 30 pellets is a rigmarole, but then that's the price you pay for rapid fire shooting. That fast fire performance is driven by a blowback action. It's great fun to use and has been very reliable over the weeks that I've been testing it. The trigger is quite heavy, but that's not a problem. The last thing you want on a semi-automatic is a very light trigger. There's also a manual safety catch conveniently positioned just above the trigger blade. The Beretta CX4 Storm is powered by an 88 gram CO2 capsule. Push in the buttons on either side of the butt plate and it pulls out to expose the port that the capsule screws into. Simply screw it in, in a clockwise direction until it locks in position and then push the butt plate back in. With the gun gassed up, it's time to clip up with a full magazine, pull back the cocking lever and push off the safety catch and you're ready to let rip. Expect around 200 shots before it's time to replace the CO2 capsule. The test gun has been producing power levels of around five foot pounds. Umarex state it as being closer to six foot pounds and you can expect some variation depending on your pellet choice. It's a sensible power level for backyard clinking, but don't expect to be toppling knockdown targets at long range. The CX4 has a smooth barrel and groups of around an inch at 12 meters were the norm for me. So it isn't a precision paper puncher and it doesn't have the power or accuracy to tackle live quarry. But then that isn't what it's intended for. This is an out and out fun gun and it's perfectly suited to high speed tin toppling. Priced at £420, this is not a cheap plinking package, but the XT kit does come with a lot of extras, including silencer, scope and carry case. And the CX4 Storm isn't your everyday backyard plinker. Most importantly though, it's just great fun to shoot. That's all for this week, but we'll be back again in a fortnight. Thanks for watching and please don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you aren't already a member of the BASC, it's time you joined the organisation that works to promote and protect your sport.